So greetings family, I have the blessing of being here with a sister that you all know, or you may know, they may not, huh? Right? There's a lot of people on the continent that folks don't know, but I like to make it a surprise and just drag it out. And you know, they'd be like, who is it? Who is it? So y'all gonna see now. Um, this is a sister who is working at this academy. Is it Gay Nore? Gay Njoro. Njoro. Mm -hmm. Gay and Gay and Joro. I gotta get my, you know, linguistics together when I come to the continent. I'll tell you, they stole my language and I'm stuck with this one that I speak. But over here is the core values. Um, we're gonna go this way. Keep y'all on this so I don't get these young ladies here. And then I'm gonna. All right, so these are the core values for the academy. And then we have a sister that has come from the states and given her time and energy to the beautiful young people here and I'm gonna bless you with her presence now look I'm going real slow cuz I know y'all like who this look who that model stop playing it's sister Phoenix so I'm here with her Hello. at the Academy she just gave me a nice warm hug and she's gonna give me a little tour and how you said you came here did you know when you came to the continent that you were going to be in a sewing school was that ever in the plans well i always wanted to start the sewing school i actually began the framework of the sewing school in the states and doing that work nice but cost was prohibitive right okay. real estate prices the real estate market is crazy in the okay. U.S. Yes, it is. So I, I wasn't able to get any property or land or commercial space, anything like that. Right. So when the opportunity came for me to come to the continent, I, I just brought the dream with me. And I knew that I would be sewing here. And so I'm going to aim it down. Scan it if you want me to scan. Okay. So this is your dressing bag. On the other side of the building here, stab toilet, and looks like it looks up here. Are these the founders of the school up here? Yes, and then this is the library here. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm trying to enlarge this picture so y'all can see the founders of the Skills Academy. And then this is the library here, and this was a partnership with a wonderful woman that is still good friends with our CEO, um, Ladosha Wright in Cleveland. Um, nice. You know, and so in, a, in connection with the Cleveland Public Library. I don't know if you all can see, but oh, how cute. Let me see if this oh, it's online. nice. No, it's not. It's okay. I think so, they got a little view of the library. Look yes. at that. Very nice. It's nicely set up. Nice. Okay, we're going to step back outside. Downstairs and back upstairs, but over here is yes. where the admin offices and the catering department. Okay, so Gay and Jure uh, administrative offices are right across this courtyard. So this is a courtyard here. So they're across this side. You said administrative offices and the catering and the program. Catering department. Okay, yes. is over there. And we just came from the hairdressing side. So they seem to take up this whole second level up yes. here. Yes. Okay. And this is cool. This is right off turntable. Okay, so it's a it's a spot that everyone could get to easily access. Yes. That's good. It's a good it's a target and location. It started with hairdressing. So the CEO okay. is um, her core uh, profession was in hairdressing. Okay. And so she started the school with hairdressing okay. and then expanded into catering okay. and then expanded to tailoring. Tailoring is, so the, you know, is the newest department. I have a question. What do you all do with these little pieces? <laughs> well, here, that's a funny little story. Um, they have been throwing things away. Right. But Auntie Phoenix and her zero waste um, <laughs> mantra. Yes. I'll be picking them up off the ground. I and mean, I have a big bag of scraps in there that I keep. Oh, see, and you're I with me. Because you know, I'm. Stuff. There you go. Because I like to make earrings. And so I'm yes. looking, thinking these little pieces would be perfect there you for, go. for a pair of earrings. Look, look. So if I can have this right uh -huh. here. Look at that. I, I'm, I'm taking scraps, y'all. You see that? This is beautiful fabric. Yeah, nice. Yes. Thank you. See, y'all know I'll be picking up stuff wherever Listen, I go. They laughed at me when I first started picking up scraps. And then one day I just sat down and started stitching and they them together. Saw, they saw. And ended up making a little zipper pouch. And they were like, oh. I said, uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I'm holding the camera down because we're passing people. And I don't want to aim the camera at them. 
So you all, the important thing is that you still hear her voice speaking yes. to us. So in the different classrooms we have, this loving one, they mostly work with the simple machines. Those are the treadle machines that don't require power. Okay, right. so I can aim at this real quick. Mm -hmm. These and are the machines that don't require power. Remind you of the old machines you remember your aunties working on. Yes, yes, yes. And the level one students mostly use those. Um, it's mostly what is the best thing for like the local shops that they can power those out so much. Right. So they can keep this so is that a pedal machine? These are the uh -huh, these are the treadle machines. Okay. But then the, the intermediate students they use, are, they use the um, commercial industrial machines. Okay. And so this was the pedal machine pedal machines. This one is uh, industrial and this is electric as well? These are electric, yes. Okay. So this is one of the things that we are having to deal with is we're still both in partnership, myself and the school, um, fundraising for uh, solar and inverters so we can keep the power going. Okay. Now the, yeah, these are nice machines. I don't know too much about sewing, but... So see y'all, if you can see, look, you got a view of all of Gambia from here. Look at this, it's a very small patio, but when I tell you, you see everything. Like this, yeah, this is where we spot. take our breaks. We come out here and watch, yeah. we can watch the vendors, we can watch yes. the traffic going, we can kind of really keep our fingers on the pulse of what's happening in the Gambia. Absolutely. Just right here. And buy everything you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I'm serious, we talking clothes here. Uh, fresh fruit here, fresh fish over here. Cause I know yeah. I just passed some ladies with some in fish. In the evening, it really turns into a fish market. In the evening, around right about five or so, I see they that. Oh, okay. They yeah. um, they bring the fish down from Tangi, and they set up this whole. Yeah, corner. I saw a lady, a down. group of ladies there, but I know I've stopped there a few times and had fish there. Yeah, and then across is a little action as well. All your cooked food. It's like across the way. Yes. So I remember grabbing stuff there at night. Yeah. And right down the back stairs too, that it comes out on this back street here. And they're all kind of little, little restaurants and yeah. restaurants and okay. stuff there. So we eat lunch. I can I can get lunch for fifty dollars. Oh, see, yeah, you beating prices. I'm used to. I'm used to seventy five dollars. <laughs> and I thought I was doing something. <laughs> She look, and she been here longer, so she know the spots. Listen, right? I, I t I've been telling people my saving grace has been learning to live local, live local, eat local. Yes, I ask like the a students native. to teach me and take me where they go. Yes, you know. And once you go enough and you continue to build relationships, yes, then you you get the same pricing. That's it, and right? it's so important that you said that because I think a number of us come from the West, come from the states, the UK and other places and we just kind of have these expectations that people are going to accept us yeah and the bottom line is that you're a foreigner you know you're a foreigner so how you think you're going to come somewhere where you don't speak the language yeah. and get treated like everyone else so i have an expectation to be treated fairly but i don't know that i have the expectation to get treated like i'm another exactly Gambian the same. Yeah. until i earn that yeah i mean even even if you want to throw out the word foreigner and yes. not use that the, the truth is that you're still a stranger Yes. You're a stranger. stranger even if, even danger, if they don't consider right? you a foreigner, you're, right. you're a stranger. And so, right. so it really is crucial to build good relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember thinking um, when I come to the continent, I was going to meet everybody that I follow. <laughs> you know, and, and it's happened mostly. It really has yeah. just by chance. And it was funny because I generally was in the habit of following high vibration people that I felt were going to be productive to my journey. Nice. If anybody went off that deep tangent, somehow I just was like, okay, well, you know, it's too many other people to choose from. <laughs> right. You can just kind of move it along. Everybody's yeah. development and this process is different. Yeah. Do you have any regrets about leaving the States? Not really. I miss my family. Mm -hmm. I miss my family. I miss the people, but I don't, I don't regret coming here I don't regret leaving the States um, for me no matter what all transpired I absolutely knew with certainty that this was a God mission for me and that I was supposed to come right so I, I just have come to a place where everything 
prior to now was what was necessary to get me here to where I am right now. Yeah, I, I'm just right. You see, I'm I'm, a, y'all I'm, can't see me, <laughs> but I am literally like, look, look, I need to turn the camera on me because I'm like this. Yeah. Right? I'm just nodding my head and shaking because people who have come here led by spirit, I have heard this so many times. Yeah. And you know, it, it's a similar thing. You want it to believe that the like minded, high vibration people have listened in spirit and they know their purpose. And those yeah. are usually the folks that have come here and done things and get things done. It's that simple. Yeah. You know, you're here, whether it's for your own spiritual development or to help other people yeah. out of places that, uh, and give them access to things that they wouldn't generally have access to. Exactly. Right? I, I knew that I had something to offer. I yes. knew that I had something to offer. Yes. And I knew that whoever, whomever I was supposed to give it to was going to be receptive. Right? That's it. And I had to be willing to walk in that. You know, some people have heard me tell this story a little bit and, and not fully believe me. Yeah. But when I came this first, the first day I ever came to Gay and Joro and I sat down and introduced myself to Auntie F, the CEO, and we talked. We were two like-minded women. She was very, very um, straightforward with me and told me that I would love to have you here. In fact, I need you here, but I have no budget. I have no budget for you. I can't pay you. I can't afford you. I can't pay you. But my spirit knew I was supposed to be here. And so I simply said, if we are two women that are who we say we are, yes. and we both want this to happen, then we'll make it happen. I want to come. No matter what, we'll work out anything else, but I want to come. And she said, when do you want to start? I met with her like on that Thursday. I said, I can start coming next week. She said, okay, fine, come. And I started coming the following week. And I would come one day a week. And then they increased it to two days a week. Then it went to three days a week. Then eventually I was here a full Monday through Friday, right. the full week, until next thing you know, it's been a year. It's been a, a year plus. Yes. I now have my own department. I actually now have a contract where you I see will how the earn a living. Are. But how is that, when you think about it, how is that any different in the States? Don't people do interns and not get paid? Yeah. And they be running them for coffee, running you ragged, yes. using as your personal servant and everything else, and they don't pay you, and no one ever complains. But you come to a country where you really don't know much of anything but you expect to get a check like you got to yeah. start off somewhere you have to start and you and have people to pay will your see dues. your talents and they know yeah. right because you it has to be seen as just going to be a reliable person is this person trustworthy now this is someone i can go to bat for yeah. and request an um you know a contract exactly like we need to have this person on board because we see the changes that she's making mm -hmm. and that's what's important um and also to motivate folks right because yes. we were talking about some of the young people that may feel discouraged and how you are able to have conversations with them yeah. and, and just kind of give them a different perspective or you might yeah. think it's bad right now, yeah. you know, but um, well, it's always see a lesson. That, you know, there's, there's all these conversations that go on, especially on YouTube about, you know, we're the same, but we're not the same. We don't, we're not seeing the same. But the truth of the matter is humanity is humanity. People are human all over the world, yes. right? People are human all over the world. And if we focus on our differences, then we will forever be divided. But there's a lot of things that we're similar about because yeah. the struggles of a woman are the struggles of a woman. It don't matter whether she's American, whether she's Gambian, whether she's Nigerian, whether she's Ethiopian, right? There comes a point when every woman can sit down with any other woman and there's some places that's the same for us. Yes. That's true with life stories. So if, if you if you take the time to get to know the life stories, I listen to these students right. and I, 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 I made one vow when I first came here. Well, actually just before I came. I th took some time to think about what will be my my way of, of beginning to build relationships. Mm -hmm. And I decided that once I got here, everybody that I met and was able to engage in some meaningful way, even if it was short term, I would yes. ask them to teach me something. Not ask them for something, ask them to teach me something. Nice. And because I asked them to teach me something, it put me in a humble posture to people and they received me much better than me thinking. I never, I didn't initially come thinking, I, I knew that I wanted to teach and that I wanted to give, Yes. but I didn't come 
asking people, let me give you, let me do this for you, let me help you out of your circumstances. Just assuming, let me help me because just that's assuming yeah, that because, people need your help. Yeah, no. because that is really a superiority complex. Yes, that that is. tells people that I think that I'm better than you and I need to help you out of your lowly life. But instead I said, help me. I'm here. I came to live here. I want to understand living here. Yes. So please teach me something. Yes. It didn't matter what it was. I had somebody take me to the side of the road and teach me how to hail a cab. Right? Because when you first get here, all you're doing is hiring drivers. I don't know how to hire a driver now for the most part. I take local transport, yes. but I didn't know how to go out to the road. And you get know, there's, a, there's a whole traffic language that ain't, they ain't the same as ours, and you don't know how to you point your fingers up, you point your fingers down. Which way? You uh, wait, 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 and, and, look, and for me, for turntable, I do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is where I'm going. Like, you don't have to say nothing else. So we don't have to show y'all the hand signals, exactly. right? It's like, yeah, because we do this for uh -huh. left and right. Uh -huh. They don't even say left and right, it's a cuff. Yeah, you make a cuff when you get yep. down to the end. You make a cuff, you know. So, yeah, that that is um, it, it's heavy, but you know it. It just kind of makes me smile inside because when you think about when you know your purpose, yeah, no one is perfect. Like, don't get it twisted. When I talk about high vibrations, I'm not talking about perfection. Mm -hmm. I am talking about people knowing their purpose and yeah. being willing to contribute and give back. Yeah, right. And like you said, like. No matter what the journey is, every experience that you had up until this very moment was to prepare you for this journey. When I think about all the jobs I had, yep. I always joke and say, you know, I did everything but dance on a glass table, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only thing I didn't do. Like I'm talking being uh, a waitress, yes. a host, yes, all these you know, things. physical therapy, babysitting. Homeless shelters, social services, law, like everything across the board. But now you have so much relational experience. This is it. This is it. So when I'm dealing with people, it's real easy. I'm like, okay, so do you know how to advocate for yourself? Right. Do you know how to get out of this situation? Right. In the States, we have this system. What do you guys have in place? Oh, you don't have it? Sounds like you need to get that in place. That's a business for yeah. you. Yeah. You know, um, so it, it's all for a reason, but I'm so happy that we were able to have this opportunity um, to speak and that, you know, I bumped into you hailing a taxi, right. actually. <laughs> hailing a taxi. She was trying to get a taxi around. during the rush hour and uh -huh. we were standing not too far from each other, you know. And I just always admire when I see my brothers and my sisters doing positive things, you know. So I yeah. knew after I walked away from you, I said, why didn't I just ask her? If I could interview her, she's working at her school with these young people. And I know so many young people that come in and they don't seem to know what direction to go into. Mm -hmm. So I knew I needed to speak to you so that you could give this message to the young people yeah. that this is an option. Yeah. So if you could just repeat what you told me, because I think right before we started um, recording, you were telling me that the students here go up until ninth grade. Can you repeat that so they know they can come here? Yes. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, I mean, there are some here that graduate, uh, you know, high school and that sort of thing. But right. the minimum um, requirement that, that we ask for here at Gay and Joro is a ninth grade education. And that is really so that there are good fundamentals in terms of reading and writing um, and doing math because fashion design um, done properly requires, you know, taking measurements and calculating you know, um, uh, your draftings and all of that, so you get an, an accurate fit. Yes. So when we do um, the intake and students apply, right. the minimum requirement is ninth grade. Although that is not a hard and fast rule. Right. Because. You have a testing? Is there like an, an intake? Process or they have to they do, do like a preliminary exam. They do like no, they do a um. Entrance. We have a panel. We have an entrance okay, panel, okay. and they come and they meet. Um, it's usually a three or four person panel. Nice. Um, that since I've been here, it's mixed with with myself and Gambians, and we have we conduct the interviews both right. in English and Wolof, so that nice. we understand if um, yeah. you know they can understand English and that sort of thing because we're we're growing the um, program to be able to give them exposure to the Western market. So okay. if you're creating things for the Western market, you have to understand things like our seam allowances are different. If you've gone to a local tailor you, and seen the inside Everything of garments, you think, small. Cut, cut small, small, but the seams are crazy big and, right. you know, unfinished. That, but, but that's important that you said that, right? Because my issue is everybody think they could sew. 
see you go to put on an item, you go to sit down and your pants are splitting in the yeah. back. Yeah. It's like there's no uh, appreciation for inseam measurement and that sort of thing. What if they yeah. lift their arm? Well, what if they go to reach it's, it's for the something? Function, it's the function of the clothing. It's yes. understanding the function of the clothing, but yes. then also, of it, also some of it is um, the nature of the culture, right? Yes. And what, so what I mean by that is I've had classes here teaching the students how to respectfully take measurements that they don't take. They're doing pants that don't fit well yeah. because they can't take an inseam measurement because they think it's an inappropriate measurement to take. You can't be touching people to, to get it's this private. right. Yeah. And so I've explained to them that being a fashion designer is very much like being a doctor. You have to make people comfortable to basically take their clothes off in front of you and you have to be a professional. And sometimes as a male tailor, you have women clients and as a woman tailor, you have male clients. And if you're going to, to elevate your craft and have people know they can come to you for quality and fit, you have to take a scope of measurements, right? So teaching them, literally, if you, you put the camera on my hands, but showing them how you you put your, hold your tape and how you put your fingers a certain way right. and you measure from here so that you're not touching any intimate parts, but you have to take an inseam measurement, teaching them how to show their client how to stand, right? shoulder width apart, feet shoulder width apart, and then you sit down and you put your hand here and, take, and you take an inseam measurement. Yes. yes. But they're not used to taking this measurement it's so interesting because it's a see? modest country, see? See? And those are things we take for granted. So right. I'm so glad that you said that because I'm just like, how do they not t take the inseam? Not even thinking. They'd have to go between your legs to take the end scene. Like uh -huh. that did not even occur to me. So I'm yes. so glad you said that. Yeah, and that's that's why. But this yeah. is the this is the, the the thing of you know, people not understanding the, the the work that I've done for a year. I couldn't come in yeah. and just start teaching. I had to come in and understand. See where people and are. See where people are and meet them where and they understand are. Understand why yeah. they do what they do. Why they do it the way they do it. Help me understand why. Right. 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 And once you understand the why, then you can begin to show them why what they're missing is causing a problem. Yes. And then show a way that they can can add those things in, but still be appropriate to their culture and their faith. Look at that. Look, if y'all ain't know, you're going to learn today, okay? Y'all just got schooled, not only on sewing, but on the importance of being receptive to learning, right? You have to learn first. So I so appreciate that. Look, I just learned a few things. So I got me some free fabric from yes. my little earrings. So that was the first thing. It's free fabric laying all over the place, right? Yeah, I have to get it before Phoenix gets it. Because I will snatch it up. Uh, it, it I have a whole me. bag in there of scraps that I just pick up. I go through. And, and that's what you do because you know you're going to be using it for something. Mm -hmm. Costumes or whatever. And fringe edges. You don't even have to cut them because you yeah. have them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thank you so much. We're going to wrap up. Is there any yeah. last words you want to leave the family with? Um, I just want people to, to, to follow and be excited with us because, yes. you know, this is really the first, this space that I've been given, this one room here, is the first um, production center and maker space to exist in the Gambia. And we have some really exciting things coming. So I just got approval that I've got three more sewing machines coming. Oh, beautiful. Um, beautiful we are colors, to too. Have I like the colors, the purple and um orange is like a, it reminds me of cantaloupe yeah yes. it does it's a bright space a creative space very nice yeah we're gonna have quite a few things coming i'm doing some outside training as well also in partnership with gay and draw nice. this is a um an international initiative partnered with gay and Joro and the eu nice um and so we are we're going to be working with local craftsmen yes. that are already in the marketplace from Pomerima to Burkama. Yes. And they're going to be coming into this space yes. and we're going to be working collaboratively as a team yes. to create this new thing called Glocal Products. Global Local. Glocal. No, that's right? cute. Yes. Pairing local craftsmanship yes. with innovation and technology Very so nice. that they can the local craftsmen can be exposed 
to the world. Kind of the way Starbucks has done with their um, free trade and having things made or yeah. grown in the villages and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be working to brand right the Gambia and expose um, some of the craftsmanship that happens here with the rest of the world. So if you think the wood carvings, you see all these wonderful carpenters here. We're yeah. going to be taking some scrap wood and carving them into wonderful little shapes and then inserting USB drives in them so that those techies who don't necessarily come to the Gambia but they want a piece of Africa, they can have a USB That's with really wood cool. that is grown here right. and they can, every time they plug into their computer, they can think about Mama Africa. That's beautiful. And I am literally one of only two trainers selected for this program in the entire game. That is amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm, I'm, just, I'm full. I'm full today. You have this to be. This is a great day for this. I'm just really, really full. That is excited. amazing. I'm so, look, look, and I... <laughs> God, look, look, I'm just like, you know how you have like your CNBC's reporters? <laughs> We're going to use the African station, yes. the African diaspora or something like that. I feel like I am providing the breaking news yeah. Yeah, for Phoenix Rain. Yeah, this is exciting. So now for those of you who don't know, please follow Phoenix on her channel as uh -huh. well. Needles right? and Nourishment in Gambia. Needles and Nourishment in the Gambia. And check us out. Subscribe, like, and share. And if you have questions, I'm sure she'd be willing to answer them. Absolutely. So you can go to her channel and ask questions about the sewing program, how you can contribute, how you can donate. I know there's some designing folks out there that's right now, their mouths are watering, yeah. thinking about how they could be a part of this process. Yeah. So I would love know. to I would love to have some partners in, in the States and that well, sort of thing because we don't have any of the things, honey. And we're doing all of this with what you, you know, have. What we have. We Limited don't have design resources. rulers. We don't have you know what about um patterns we well i'm i'm praying to be able to teach formal pattern making soon right okay. now we are drafting freehand on the fabric because again those things that are so what if i tell you that i came with like a dozen patterns vintage, uh, vintage patterns <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to get them to you. I've been okay. like, who am I going to give these to? Please. I've just had them. Please. Mind you, you know, I design clothes in my mind just because there are things that I like to wear. Uh -huh. And I give them to my seamstress and she hooks it up. And I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I want. But never am I trying to say that I'm like a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. I, I do things right. that I like and I stay in my lane. Yeah. But if I know someone else could use these items, yes. uh, yeah, I would like to donate Thank them to you. your school. We would love that. I think because they'll get a better idea. Yeah, because there's no place the to paper. even buy patterns here. So, oh, girl, I got them. So you know, being able to mm -hmm. to even um, share with the students, this is what yeah. you know commercial patterns look like, and yes. this is how you use them how to make the pattern markings and this sort of thing like yeah. some things they can they just go because there's a way that you, you can see something and just do it and so they're gifted in that way right but as it pertains to actually knowing the techniques and doing it without guessing yeah not always and so you know okay. pattern markings and things like that I'm teaching all oh, these absolutely. things so yeah. I like to donate some patterns to your program and also I told you anytime you all want to um, sell some of the items from the shop. I told you we have a consignment Absolutely. program. Yes. You are welcome to bring a few items. If they sell, I'll call you. Be like, listen, come get your there money you for the school. Yep. Whatever you want. I think it would be a great opportunity yes. for them yes. to showcase. And our space is also open if you would like to do a fashion show there. <laughs> We could you do a small, about yeah, we could do a small entry fee for folks. Mm -hmm. but some of the funds could be donated to the school yeah. for that. This way the students could let their families know yes. and we could set up and do that as well. So my space is available okay. to you. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, family. Yeah, I love that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. You are welcome. So we're gonna wrap up. Yep. We're gonna do our last little shot together. Y'all see us. Blessings, family. <laughs> All right.